Good day. Now look at this soupy mess that has uh, come in over uh, North Bend Airport. It wasn't this soupy when I landed here. It is, in fact, what people call low IFR. So not only is it um, whether you cannot fly in <clears throat> without being instrument rated, uh, you might very well not be able to come in and land at all. The uh, cloud bases, as you see around here, are reported to be around 300 feet. And uh, let me see here. Uh, visibility is three quarters of a mile. Which is not good. Most instrument approaches are uh, <clears throat> limited to something around that. Uh, so um, if it gets ever so slightly worse than this, you might not be able to come in here, at least legally. Uh, there's always a possibility that you can just dive beneath uh, whatever uh, minimum altitude you uh, have, but, um, well, it's not legal. But I can depart, as I wish. Um, and I will. I'm uh, gonna head <clears throat> down the coast to the, uh, basically to the next airport. Uh, actually, uh, the second airport. The next airport doesn't have any instrument approaches at all. So my plan is to head to, uh, what is it? Crescent City, isn't that the name of it? Yes. Ooh, I got the... Uh, window hidden there. There it is. That's better. So, um, Crescent City. That is my uh, most likely destination. I'm going to try at Gold Beach Airport. But it reports 300 feet overcast, two and a half mile visibility. Um, but the approach has only a circling approach, which just basically means that the final approach course doesn't really align very well with the uh, runway. As you can see here, the course goes in here. That's the missed approach point. If you cannot see the runway by then, you have to go around. But if you can see it, it is not lined up. So it's uh, for that reason called a circling approach. That, however, means um, that um, the minimums will be very high. In this instance, uh, for my airplane, 1,740 feet and two and a half miles visibility. The visibility I just barely have as it is, but um, the cloud layer is just way off. So I'm not gonna land there, but I will shoot an approach if I can. I'm gonna fly there as if I'm gonna land there and uh, I can legally shoot an approach I know that I'm not going to get in, and I'm going to fly the missed approach, and then divert to uh, the next airport. The complication with that, though, is that Crescent City um, is also very low um, IFR. It has one half mile visibility and overcast uh, 300 feet. So I cannot legally have that as an alternate. It's going to be in my 
alternate in practice because it's just a few minutes down the coast. But it's uh, the um, requirements, uh, I think, is uh, two miles visibility and 600 feet if there's a precision approach. And I think 800 feet visible uh, or a cloud layer if, um, if it's a non-precision. Something like that. It's at the, in any case, it's uh, way too low for me to be able to uh, to do that uh, uh, approach, or rather, to have it as uh, an alternate. So I'm gonna have to put uh, something else as an alternate that is legally an alternate and that has good weather and has forecast to be good weather. Hello, David. Um, yeah, I could scud run it, um, but but that's uh, while that is fun. Um, I kind of, it's been a long time since I've flown uh, <laughs> water ski it. Yeah. Uh, well, that's this is probably not the best time for me to learn to water ski the beaver. Um, coming in over the um, coming over over the ocean uh, in a plane that I never water skied in in low IFR. No, I don't think so. Someday I will take you up on it and uh, try it. It just seems so so scary and uh, um, yeah. Anyway, um, what was I thinking? Yes, I need uh, an alternate with excellent weather and forecast to be excellent. Medford is clear in a million and uh, I don't see any forecast right there. I'm just going to check here on four flight. Doesn't that, it have a TAF? It does. Um, clear in a million. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I'll hold your bear and uh, I will drink it while uh, you're crashing into the ocean. How does that sound? By the way, I'm headed uh, towards uh, Crescent City uh, for obvious reasons, by the way. That's where we are. Uh, that's where we're starting the group flight, isn't it? Or is it one airfield further south? I think it's Crescent City. I'd actually only planned to go to Gold Coast. Uh, um, but uh, the approach won't let me get down. If I can, I will land there. If uh, there's some, for some reason I can break through, I will take it. But I can expect not to be able to land. So I'm going to put Medford as my alternate. Um, but I'm not going to go there. That's I'm going to go there if... I don't get into Crescent City. That's the plan. So I'm going to use the alternate as uh, my real out. Which means I need to have fuel enough. I think that's going to be no factor. But uh, I'm going to take enough fuel. I'm going to try out the North Bend 7 departure. If they will let me have it. Um, if they won't, I'll probably just be vectored directly to the airway, or maybe directly... Oh, I don't know. Maybe they have some other plans for me. Maybe they'll put me on the, the GPS route, the T route. But I'm going to file the North Bend 7 departure. Um, which, in any case, all of this mess here means... Uh, go towards the ocean. And uh, at 1,300 feet, turn right, heading the VOR. Uh, the minimum climb rates are uh, uh, for the two runways that face inland. Uh, there's a bit of a climb rate, but it's not really a factor for the Beaver. Um, the ocean-facing runways are uh, both at least able to do uh, standard uh, minimums. Uh, which is uh, kind of uh, what I need, because I cannot accept the... Um, well, actually, uh, runway 13 is the one I couldn't take, because it only has 401 for minimum takeoff. Runway 5 I could have standard with the minimum uh, climb gradient. 
So it's uh, it's 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 a non-factor for uh, this plane with these large runways, but it's a um, good exercise to uh, to check. So I can accept all the runways in practice, but not runway one three uh, legally, as far as I understand it. Um, anyway. Uh, I don't know which runway I'm going to get, but uh, regardless, I'm going to take whatever I get and uh, do what it says to the VOR and then follow up Victor 27. I'm going to go down to ledge, which is right here, and uh, I'm going to file uh, uh, North Bend 7 departure. Uh, it doesn't have any transitions as far as... Yes, it does. Ledge transition. So, uh, Auth7.ledge. So that's my... Uh, um, um, SID standard instrument departure so it will take me to the ledge by default so I don't have to file ledge as well uh, after the departure I will file this fix out here which is called uh, MUD which is the initial approach fix for the RNAV at Gold Beach Airport which will uh, basically uh, give me a straight in. Um, this is not a... Um, um, hold in lieu of procedure turn, and there are no procedure turns charted, so I can just... And, uh, the terrain speaks for itself. There's no nothing around to crash into, so uh, I'm going to get to mud from roughly this angle here going uh, south southeast uh, west rather and i can go straight in and i'm gonna expect at stray to have to stray away from the airport i'm not gonna be able to see it if i do i will land if i don't i will climb straight ahead to 2100 right turn 4200 back to mud At which point I will um, just say that I will uh, <clears throat> uh, not go back. Uh, I will uh, go to my. Uh, I will have request uh, to get to Crescent City. I'm um, going to suggest direct ferns and uh, hope that they can give me that because that's going to be basically. I'm going to turn. What did I say? Which way am I turning? Right turn after uh, the missed uh, at the missed approach. It's going to be a right turn over the ocean, and uh, I'm not going to fall. I'm going to not going to fly the whole uh, missed approach if I can if I can avoid it. Uh, I'm going to be vectored south. Uh, turn one eight zero when able direct ferns and uh, cleared. Uh, what, what is it? I'm going to do the RNAV 1, 2 because that has excellent minimums. And this is interesting. ILS or localizer 1, 2 is the one approach at uh, Crescent City Airport that is not available as an alternate. I probably could fly it though because I'm not using it as a formal alternate. That's an interesting um, thing actually. I don't know if that's... Uh, if when I am not filing it as an alternate, is it then uh, considered an, an alternate? Crescent City, yeah, okay, excellent. Do you know this, David? If I, uh, I file, um, uh, file Medford as my alternate, but I actually go to this uh, Crescent City McNamara field. It's not formally my alternate. That's the airfield I'm actually going to divert to. Is it then legal for me to use the ILS, even though it's not available as an alternate? Probably an edge case. I'm gonna um, because I've I had uh, kind of thrown away this procedure for that reason. Um, but let's see here what the minimums are. Two, 250 above ground. It has um, 
and uh, three quarters of visibility. Uh, that's basically just within uh, minimums right now. But the RNAV went to has the same visibility, and it's legal as an alternate. It has alternate minimums, um, uh, but it's just uh, um, not available when they when it's not not reporting weather. Uh, I already checked, but I can actually uh, very well recheck that, so I'm not saying anything wrong here. Alternate minimums and uh, Crescent City. All of these approaches, except the ILS, not available when local weather is not available. So if I have the weather, I can go there. Um, so the ILS doesn't give me any benefits as far as I can see. And um, the uh, RNAV is very simple. I get to ferns as if I can get straight to, uh, to that. Um, there's no procedure turn for any of these uh, feeder routes here or initial f or, um, approach fixes. So this holding pattern here is likely for the missed approach. No, it's not. Yes, it's a, uh, it's a, um... oh, wait a minute. What is it then for? It's holding pattern for what? Um, could there be, uh, it could be that if I fly ferns as my, uh, initial approach fix, then I have to fly. There's no, no PT here. But if I fly to Hubex, which has no PT, I can then go straight in. Or Simul, no PT. I can go straight in. That is an interesting conundrum. I think that's going to be it, because there is no uh, initial approach fix over the airport that takes me outbound, and then I have to turn around. So I might actually benefit time-wise to go to Simul, uh, because then I don't have to faff around with uh, the uh, hold. Uh, I could also be cleared straight in uh, by ATC, but that re requires them to actually do that or me to request that. <clears throat> so I'm going to think, uh, I'm going to just see where a symbol is on the map here. It's not charted, but I can just drag this out here to the east and see if it comes up. That's not it. Six miles. Okay, let's see here. It's not that far, but then probably. There it is. That's a bit of a cheating uh, way of doing it. So if I can file directly to Simul, it's not on the map here, but it, it is a fix there. That's the initial approach fix for the, um, or one of them, which can take me directly to Ferns and then straight in. That's going to make my life much easier. And uh, if I'm RNAV, I'm RNAV. I can, or I, can uh, I can use my GPS to navigate to whatever fix I want. So I'm probably going to request that. Which will take me on an LPB approach, which will uh, give me... Uh, um, Um, guidance, uh, the glide slope uh, uh, gl guidance as well, which is why the uh, minimums are so excellent. <clears throat> the missed approach is climb straight out 600 feet, right turn 3000 feet, and chide where I'm going to hold. I don't know where that is. Uh, it doesn't even say, I think. No, it doesn't say where it is, uh, but it's... Uh, let me just see if I can see it on the map here. Chide. Somewhere to the side. Okay, it's there. So it's uh, 11 miles out. Not a good place to hold over the ocean. But And uh, what altitude they, they would want me up to? 3,000. All right. 
I have a feeling that um, by the time I've finished faffing around with uh, planning here, the weather is going to lift. But it's been uh, muddy like this the whole day, so... In any case, uh, I'm not going to likely fly the whole missed approach procedure anyway, uh, because I'm not going, I'm not going back. Well, actually, if if uh, if I, I'm not planning to go missed here. I plan to land here. Uh, the minimums should take me below the cloud deck, and uh, I have visibility enough, just barely, but it should be uh, enough. Uh, but if I don't, I will probably want to. Uh, try again at least once uh, before uh, doing the uh, proper diversion over to Medford which is uh, let's see here what is the uh, distance over there it's 73 miles to the uh, Rogue Valley VUR so uh, uh, complete with approach that's roughly 100 miles um, that's 25 gallons just there for that leg. And um, this whole mess down here, as it is charted right now, let me take that ferns thing away. Oh, I, can let, I can leave it there just for visual reference. This whole mess down here is also a shade over 100 miles. Uh, which is another 25 gallons just for the flying route at cruise speed and altitude, not um, considering the uh, the climbs and all of that. Um, so I'm going to take double. I'm going to have uh, 100 gallons. So that's tw 25 gallons there, 25 gallons there, or well, actually a little bit more. So at least 100 gallons, 100, 100 120 gallons. Let's say 120. I have a bit of fuel in the plane already, uh, so I might very well not need to fill up at all, but uh, um, if I do, I will. Uh, which is in practice for me to have all the main tanks full and the belly. That's going to be enough. Not going to take the tip tanks. So that's that. I'm going to file the first uh, flight. That's um, simple enough. Uh, uh, North Bend 7 departure, top ledge, uh, direct mud, and direct. And uh, I'm going to note down Simul as uh, the one I want direct for, uh, which will take me to the uh, Arnav runway 1-2 at uh, McNamara. Uh, when or if I, uh, I'm i not able to uh, go into Gold Beach. At Medford, uh, I, I'm absolutely confident that uh, once I get climbed over this uh, terrain here, uh, let's just pick up the BFR chart. Uh, there's a bit of a terrain climb here to get uh, over there. If they can clear me to Medford, uh, they're probably going to head me direct to the VOR, climb and maintain something like the 8,000. Um, uh, how fast do I need to be at 8,000? There's a crossing restriction there, isn't it? Uh, No, I don't see a crossing restriction. So that means that if I were to come to a 3000 northbound on Victor 27 to um, Crescent City VOR, turning northeastbound on Victor 122 would allow me to be there at 3000 and then start climbing at normal climb gradient uh, or the minimum climb gradient. As far as I understand this, it's I'm a little bit iffy on that, but uh, that can be a factor anyway. I'm going to outclimb that terrain regardless. I could probably be above this uh, low cloud layer here um, pretty soon anyway. And uh, once I'm clear, I'll probably just cancel VFR and have flight following all the way into Medford. 
which is really hot. And uh, no wind to speak of. Let's just check the winds here. I never checked that. 3104, so I'm going to have it. Uh, what is, would that be? That would be a tailwind uh, for the final airport. Gold Beach has basically the same, slightly more to the north. And uh, the runway I'm going to land at, if I'm able to see it, uh, it's very unlikely anyway. Um, I would come towards runway 16, uh, but um, if I were to see the airport, I would probably just dive straight into the airport and uh, and hope for the best. I'm not gonna. I'm. I'm uh, well, actually, it's probably a good thing to think about that because the the wind is coming. Oh, hello, CG. Welcome. Um, yeah, you're in for a gray flight today. It's uh, going to be uh, very non-bushy, hopefully at least. I'm just uh, stringing together an IFR flight plan down the coast so that I'm uh, present at Crescent City for the group flight for uh, Saturday. Um, I was saying that at Gold Beach, 3305 is not really an issue to land with that, that type of tailwind. Uh, 3,200 feet, but if I can, I will uh, circle to runway 34, uh, which is left traffic. So if I see it, I will just continue on to our, to our left uh, downwind. However, uh, Uh, that's fine. Uh, it has uh, it has lights at both ends as well. So let's see here. Circling not available east of runway. Okay. Well, so that there's that. So if I'm going to circle, I cannot be north uh, to, uh, to the east of of the runway. So for the circling approach, I need to be on the ocean side. So that was a good catch. I uh, didn't see that. Not available at night. That's gonna, not going to be a factor. Um, let me see if there's any gotchas regarding that with this RNAV here. So, uh, oh, good grief. I was just about to say, um, uh, read the notes. Here we go. Look at this. Uh, where to begin, even, with this mess? In up table does not apply to LPV at all, all cats. Uh, in up table. What the hell is that? In up table does not apply to LPV at all cats. Hmm. Have to make a note of that so I can check that later. I'm gonna pretend that I didn't see it, but I'm gonna check it out later. In nope. table. Uh, if anyone in in the stream has any idea what this is, please let me know. I'm gonna pretend that you are in uh, the Beaver as passengers and are um, uh, resources for me to use. So if you if you find it out if, or if you know. Then you tell me. If you don't, well, then uh, you're gonna let me do the mistake, and you die. All cat ratings at bottom. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I have a dog in the ca in the back of the plane. Does that count, or is that inoperative? Run compensated barrow Navina uh, systems LNAV VNAV not available below zero. That's not gonna be a factor. Or above 54 degrees. Oh, I'm glad it's not that. Uh, DME R, uh, RMP 0.3 not available. My local altimeter understanding that that's not going to be a factor. I can already see it. And I can re increase that. I'm going to pretend that I didn't see that because if I don't get the altimeter, I'm just going to use the altimeter that I recently got uh, because 407 feet, that's going to be above uh, the cloud deck. 
Um, all of this pertains to not having the altimeter. For an in-up motor, if the lights are not working, well, they uh, should be. Increase all one, one mile instead of three quarters, isn't it? Yeah, three quarters. Um, blah, blah. Uh, yeah, that was that one. Uh, VDP visual descent uh, is that what is the point? That's the one. That's the V here at the end here. Uh, and barrel V now when using working altimeter. Okay, so uh, night landings not available. That's fine. Night landing runway three six. That's uh, where am I going? I'm going runway one two. So all of that is non factors. I'm wondering if. It's saying that you're not able to use some, some based on temps or on compass. Okay. Um, but I'm wondering, in-op table does not apply to, to LPV all cats. Uh, I'm wondering, is this table, that whole chunk of um, mess here, is that the in-op table? Is that what it's called? Because um, if that's the case... Uh, Oh, that doesn't make sense uh, because that make, makes that that that, uh, that says that if you are flying the LPV, all of that mess doesn't pertain to LPV, which I could see. I, it doesn't mention. Well, it does. Uh, it 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 uh, talks about LPV here though, so I was just hoping that it wasn't for me. Uh, related to visibility things. Well, uh, yes, but inop table does not apply to all. Uh, inop table does not apply to LPV, all categories. LPV, all categories. So it doesn't apply to this. But it talks about the LPV here, for example. The local altimeter setting does not received. Blah, 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 increase LPV all cats to seven eighth of a mile. So if I have six eighth of a mile, I I can, I have to go around. Who can see those eighths of a mile? Half of a quarter. Uh, anyway. I see no other issues. I'm going to pretend that I didn't see any of this. Um, um, uh, I, I'm just going to say that I was confused by all of that. It looked like uh, somebody had, uh, you know, had a cat walking over the keyboard. So that's uh, that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. This is interesting, though. Minimum safe altitude. Uh, Runway one two. 25 miles, uh, I think that's from the threshold of 1-2. 8,600, uh, so if I'm within 25 miles, 8,600 will do. Well, that doesn't help me very much. Um, but that's, that's what it's for. All right. I think I've briefed that to death. Oh, that's an excellent name. Pistol River. Carpenterville. Oh, there are so many cool, so many cool names um, in the United States. I really envy you. Our uh, Norwegian... Uh, well, here's Denmark. I mentioned Denmark in my um, previous Beaver stream uh, when I was flying to Norway. And for those of you who don't know this, Denmark is a tiny, tiny little beach uh, country just south of uh, of Norway uh, that little tip on top of Germany little it's just sand the whole thing that's Denmark 
Uh, this airport is unavailable because it doesn't have any approaches and if it's all socked in that's uh, not gonna be uh, a good place to go to. Abandoned state, same thing. Gideros, very much. That is a um, bit of a bush trip. And uh, yeah, all right. I'm uh, hoping the weather stays bad because I want this exercise to be in uh, proper uh, hard IFR. Okay, so uh, what am I thinking? Yeah, altitude. What do I want to climb to? What did the uh, departure call for? It looks like 4,000 feet is um, that route. 4,000 to ledge at least for uh, the departure procedure. Although the uh, airway has 6,400 southbound here. Uh, so by the time I get there, I should be uh, getting to be higher, I think. I'm probably going to be filing. I'm going westbound-ish. So I'm going to take 6,000. That's going to take me uh, well above all of this mess here. Does it say anything about altitudes? in the, the text portion here. Nope. So 6,000 it is. How about this portion? Uh, RNAV 2,600 for, for the no procedure turn. Uh, so well if I climb to 4,000 from out of there, from out of the uh, Missed approach from there. That should be good enough. So they're going to climb her to four or six thousand or something like that. So all of that is going to probably work out. All right, six thousand. So I'm going to file the auth seven. Let me just get it uh, correctly here. That's the name of it. Auth seven dot ledge direct mud da, 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 da. three Ds and then for Sierra one is my destination and I'm gonna put Medford as my ultimate. Um I'll put in the remarks what I intend to do so that the uh, uh, if missed Direct simul for RNAV 1, 2 at Kek. That will give the ATC a heads up. And um, so they won't be surprised when uh, I go missed. And they can check and verify that my plan is sound. So I'm going to attack Palt Edge with a filing. I'm going to file IFR. Number 524 Echo Alpha, the Havland Aircraft 2, DC2, DHC2 rather, GPS, Trailer Speed. I'm gonna set 100. Uh, Koth. And what's the name of the airport? What did I say it was? For Sierra 1. For Sierra 1. No, for Sierra, exclamation point. That's nice. 6,000. Alternate. Uh, MFR? Medford? Is that what it is? MFR. Route of flight. Oth. 7. Dot. Help me out here. Uh, ledge. Mud direct. Isn't that what I'm uh, thinking here? Auth 7. Just verify the writing here again. It's uh, embarrassing to write uh, the, fall or the wrong thing. Auth 7. Ledge. Okay, excellent. Um, mud 401. 
and if not simul if missed simul arnav want to kek isn't that how you write that airport kek yes and uh, I'm saying rnav12, and that is what it is. So now, IFR524 aircraft, but they have one, two, slight golf, one aircraft, not heavy, 100 knots, north bend, gold, whatever it's called. Jesus, I'm prepared, hey? Gold Beach, 6,000 feet, Medford. Off that ledge, mud did it. If missed, simul arnav to one to kek. Okay. Um, that should be good. Oh. All right, I'm already connected. So. Take that thing away. And, uh,. Let's see here. Um, all right. Uh, is everybody confused by my rambling planning here? Uh, or is it clear as mud? Hopefully it is clear as mud. I'm just gonna add this to actually I'm gonna program my uh, four flights after I get the clearance because if I get something else and I'm programming things in there it's gonna just double my work um, so fuel first um, what do I have I gonna need to fuel that's for sure yeah I do so I'm gonna fill up my main tanks and the belly tank that should leave me with 70 95 140 gallons that is good okay pumping flaps down there it is. And uh, fuel up. There it is. So now I have all kinds of fuel. And walk around. This I'm going to set to the. Uh, the minimum at the uh, de destination airport which was 250 feet uh, I'm not gonna set it to 1700 feet for the first because that's not gonna happen anyway um, oh yeah oil I'm gonna do that right now refill and then I go straight out I don't want to see anything else I don't want to watch um, any reports I'm gonna want to experience any engine failures when or if they happen so there now I got full oil Ooh, yeah those tires got a beating on the last flight so that's good tie downs Flappage. And again, the tail wheel seems to uh, never be uh, 
worn out. Oof, this plane is really dirty. Insert beaver jokes right here. Right. What is the temperature here? Uh, it's uh, 15 or so. Great. Um, okay. It's been a long while since I've flown a proper hard IFR flight like this. So I cannot see that, say that I'm not well, not nervous, I guess, but it's uh, it's exciting in a way that I'm uh, not used to. It's a different kind of excitement than uh, doing bush flying. Bush flying is uh, very intense at the moment. You're flying, and then you're kind of just relaxing and enjoying yourself. But IFR is really much, especially uh, when it's socked in like this, really... Um, hard work. So, okay. Off. And uh, 15 minutes ago, according to 4Flight, 350 at 8. So, uh, so that's good. Uh, 3 quarters of a mile visibility, overcast 300, low visibility, missed, 1-3, Dew point one tree, so uh, yeah, humidity hundred percent. Altimeter three zero one one. Set that gives me about twenty something feet, which is seventeen in reality, which is good enough for government work. Density altitude two minus two hundred twenty five feet, which is good enough. Two notams are they of concern to me? Well, there's actually one thing I need to just uh, quickly pull up here. Procedure for approach here. I'm going to have a look at, uh, let's see here. All the uh, uh, procedures to uh, North Bend, except the BUR approach, goes to uh, the... Uh, to, to runway five. I'm going to be departing south west. Actually, no. Well, I, um, the approach takes me out of the over the ocean and then back to uh, um, yeah. So it's not going to matter anyway. But if I need to come back, I need to at least have a have thought about which of the procedures will likely get me below the deck. Just have a look at the ILS. The minimum for the ILS is half a mile and 200 feet. So that is excellent. That is really, really excellent. Uh, it has uh, an asterisk to it. So what does that say? Missed approach requires climb gradient. That's going to begin. Not going to be a factor. I can climb. I'll climb that. Just check the RNAV just for a sanity check. Okay. So the RNAV minimums are not good enough for me to be, get below the deck. Um, uh, it's 300 feet and the uh, it's 303 feet actually and uh, the overcast is at 300 feet which means that I would be three feet above the cloud bottom which is I mean it's not that exact but uh, the uh, ILS gives me 100 feet of uh, margin so ILS it is um, so, uh, one fantastic thing about, uh, for flight is that I can load, I can pack, uh, uh, ch uh chart binder, which will, um, 
allow me to just quickly swipe through the relevant uh, uh, charts. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to load in the uh, departure procedure. And then the next chart is going to be the ILS for runway 5 to back to uh, North Bend. In case I need to go back, I can just swipe next, and there it is. And um, and then I can take the uh, approach place for the other uh, relevant airports. So now all of that is done. I'm gonna set up. Uh, I'm gonna start up the engine first. Let it warm up. So beacon on, and I can see that I have a full belly tank. And by the way, now that I'm uh, out of pre-flight mode, I can. Uh, go up there so you don't have to look at me so much as the plane center tank I'm going to start with the center tank and you know work with that and the belly tank and then I'm gonna take the other others temperature is around 10 degrees right now 10 20 12 13 degrees so Gonna take a bit of priming. Uh, was that six? I think that was six. Let's go with that. And, uh, No, I'd say this looks clear. Clear prop. Really high oil pressure here, but that's uh, normal when it's cold. So I'm just gonna leave the uh, engine hanging around 500 RPM for a while. Let it uh, at least get some circulation before I uh, start pushing further. Actually, I can just close it up. It's cold enough to me uh, to just uh, leave it there. Put on nav lights. I'm gonna wait with the alternator. Until I um, get the engine up and running more. Because it, it won't kick in before I pass about 500 uh, RPM anyway. What I can do is set 350 for that one. And what? runway can I expect with that? As I said, I could accept all the runways except the one. Let's see here. Departure, North Bend 7. Yes, runway 1 tree I cannot accept because it's uh, the weather is above the takeoff minimums. So one tree is out, all the others are good. I'm very likely to get runway 31 then, which is the one just next to me here. The one I landed at at the previous flight. So if I get one tree, uh, the departure is a left turn heading 223. Two, I actually have to set that, so that is ready. 223, two, and then join the 253 radial. I'm not going to set that because I'm going to need the runway heading for this one, just for uh, reference. Um, but I'll deal with that uh, once I uh, take off. Easy enough, though. I can actually set that on the uh, on the VOR here. Uh, 253. Can be very vigilant here. Diligent is the word. 
253 set. Follow that course out to 1300. Not gonna set that, that's gonna, I'm gonna be way above that in a few seconds. And then turn back to the VOR and then on, on course. So uh, I'm gonna use the GPS for most of this anyway, but uh, it's uh, good practice to have this uh, at least somewhat set up for uh, uh, slant, uh, slant alpha view. So I'm going to pop up the fuel pressure a little bit and prime a little bit. And look at that. The engine creeps up. I love this plane. There's so many details. Uh, you could prime it with the fuel pressure lower, but uh, the fuel pressure is not an high enough to uh, to really give it a proper squirt. That's uh, one of the things I do when uh, when the airplane is uh, when the engine is cold. Um, instead of forcing it to uh, to start rising, I can uh, give it a little extra prime, and uh, and then it will go. Okay, now it's coming up, so I can fire up the alternator and avionics. Okay, alternator. Uh, so charging, and I have battery. Very good. And thus, um, looking at the aviation uh, database on my GPS here, expired 8th of September. That's a full month ago. I'm going to pretend that I didn't see that and move on. Um, right, let's see here, what do I have for frequencies? Ground 127.1 is already ready for my last flight, the tower 118.45. Right, set up a scratch pad, uh, I'm going to bring this over here. You can see that I have a scratch pad on the uh, four flight that I'm gonna be using to uh, note down the clearance so what am I thinking I'm uh, four Sierra one wasn't that what it was called Jesus keep forgetting these names. 4 Sierra 1, Gold Beach. Listen to the engine, by the way. That's what it does when it warms up. It starts creeping. You can just leave it at a low RPM and then it will come back up on itself when it's ready. So, off North Bend. 7 departure and what was that fix called again? Let me just take the RPM down a little bit here. Departure, off 7, ledge, that's what, what, what it was. Two. Mud. Direct. Just seeing the uh, weather at Gold Beach updated nine minutes ago. One mile and three quarters, overcast 300. So uh, no major change there. RNAV Alpha. That's what I'm going to get there. Altitude, I filed 6,000. So I'm going to set that with an expect time and uh, I'll get something before that perhaps. Um, frequency, let's see. I can probably 
put that in already, so that's all, all good. Uh, departure procedure, north bend, and it should list departure, which is 127.55. 127.55. And I'm going to put in the... Uh, In my notes here, also the uh, initial approach fix and uh, the uh, approach I want at Crescent City, so that I have it handy there. Arnav one two from Simul. So what I do when I do all of this, uh, this uh, scratching, scratch pad thing, is that most of the route is now uh, presumably ready. Uh, might very well be wrong, but if it isn't, then I can just fill in um, the blanks. And the only blank I can see here is, uh, I'm gonna write as filed if that's what they give me. They're gonna probably read me the departure, that's what I do, so they're gonna say all, um, North Bend 7 departure ledge transition, then it's filed. Maintain, maybe an altitude, or climb maintain 6,000. And if they say climb uh, maintain 4,000, uh, which is the uh, uh, altitude for the SID, they can say expect 6,000 in 10 minutes. So I'm gonna write 4,000 and then the 10 minutes because rest is here. Departure is already there from the uh, SID. And the squawk, I don't know what the squawk is, of course. And I might just very well get something completely different. So uh, in which case I just need to be prepared for that. And they, uh, they will say uh, uh, full route cl uh, clearance available, Stand, um, you know, ready to copy. Um, so anyway, uh, that's that. Let's try it out. I haven't heard anything. Um, I would expect to be hearing something on the on the uh, ATC. I'm just gonna plop in uh, um, departure uh, center. See if there's uh, something going on there. Uh, discussed this at um, uh, the uh, Pilot Edge Discord, uh, I think it was yesterday or the day before, about uh, checking the radios before departure to check that both are working and uh, are, are on, which would be a good thing to do now. That's a good thing to do in real life, to check that the radios are on and that the volume are, volumes on the uh, radios are turned up. And then in Pilot Edge, uh, well, not in pilot, but in any flight sims, the audio equipment can be messed up, and suddenly you can have uh, uh, the wrong source for the sound. So I could be actually getting things in my radio now, but I'm not hearing it in my headset because of that. There you go. That's my. That was my uh, call. That it works. Excellent. It's just quiet. Tango, 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 Tango. 32.2 TBM 5Q Tango. Yeah, somebody else actually called to uh, for a radio check because it was quiet. So. Three six three Golf contact North Cal approach one two zero point nine five. That is very good. Two zero nine five four nine six three Golf. Yeah. All right. So that means that all is good. As, as, at least if I am able to be heard over the radio. So. And I have the weather 
so. Norcal approach, Skyhawk 4963 Golf with you 7500. Also with you. 5 2 0 Flagstaff, contact Denver Center 133.67. North Bend Grant, paper 524 Aqua Alpha with the minute weather, IFR to Gold Beach. Zero five two zero Julia, Baksha, Denver Center, thank you, just no cause discussion, maintain. Actually, you tell you what, um, after Meeker, so to maintain level 240. Clear to Gold Beach Airport, uh, North Bend 7 departure ledge transition, then as filed. Um, departure 121.4, squawk 2503, paper 5 for Agalfa. 4 Agalfa, read that correct. Yeah, that was interesting. I got a different frequency, 121.4, and no altitude, which is not a mistake. Um, they don't always do that, but when it is one frequency only in... Uh... No, wait a minute, hey. Uh, that that's the other way around, actually, I think. Uh, usually they don't give me um, a frequency, because it says so in uh, the chart. However, the altitude is what they uh, should give me, though. So I have to clear for that. North Bend Ground, be referred for a coffee. I didn't get an altitude with that clearance. Is that uh, normal? Before I go off, maintain 6,000. Maintain 6,000, be referred for a coffee. That was interesting. So I was actually expecting not to get the. Uh, uh, no altitude means climb SID. For real? I haven't heard that before, ever. Uh, I haven't flown that many SIDs though, but I have flown a few of them, and uh, the only thing I've heard them uh, leave out is the frequency, because it says on the chart. Uh, so that was kind of what my brain was going through now when I didn't get the information that I thought I was supposed to get. I thought, okay, that's the normal thing, where they leave out that because it says on the chart. Uh, usually they say climb via SID uh, when they... Said I may have a top, but uh, but the SID doesn't have a top limit. That's the thing with this one. Uh, uh, it has no limitation. So I think that was uh, just uh, a mistake. Uh, departure here. No, uh, North Bend Seven. It has uh, one thousand three hundred feet, uh, feet limit before you turn, and. Uh, there are various, actually there, there's, uh, there's various uh, um, um, MEAs uh, for the various directions that it goes, uh, but there's no, uh, there's no um, top altitude on the, on the chart. Um, so I think that should have been uh, given. So anyway, but th that's good. Um, I'm going to actually ask for which runway I can expect, uh, just to have that plotted correctly. North Bend Ground, be prepared for Alpha. Which runway can I expect for a departure? Before I go, I expect for like 21. 
Expecting runway 3 1, we have a fight for Agatha. Okay, excellent. So that's. Uh, so that is according to plan as far as that goes. Uh, squawk 2501, let's get that in the box, as the professionals say. 2501. Five, zero, one, set. Um, six thousand. Set. Runway three one. Um, okay, I can start setting this up now. So procedure. Departure. Up seven. Let's add. All done. Mud. Three Ds. And four Sierra one. At IFR altitude of six thousand. Uh, setting speed hundred knots. Albuquerque clearance, November 9 or 7, 8, Alpha Papa, radio check. I'm going to... 555. Squelch. Wait a minute. And we have you 555 as well, uh, requesting... There it is. So I can uh, concentrate here a little bit. All right. So I uh, am going to take full length. Uh, because if I have problems, I don't want to mess with uh, not having enough runway to come back or to come down to. Um, especially with this soupy uh, weather. Actually, I'm going to be in the uh, soup uh, in a few seconds when departing. Runway 31 is, the minimums is 300 and 3 quarters. Let's see what the weather is right now. 3 quarters and 300. It's 301 and 3 quarters, so I uh, don't have the minimums, but I can take standard, which is 0, zero with a minimum climb of 280 feet per nautical miles to 300 feet. Which is, I mean, yeah. They probably just had to contend with one building that was, you know, half a meter too high for the approach to just have a standard. Uh, departure minimum, the Pentecost of minimum. So 250, no, 280 nautical miles per, no, 280 feet per nautical mile to 300 feet. If I cannot do that, that's only because the engine has died. And uh, even the beaver could probably climb better than that with the beaver, uh, with the engine dead. Uh, all right, so that's that. Um, the, uh, I'm going to draw on my chart here what I can expect the uh, uh, route to be here. So I can just have a visual idea of what it's going to be. Straight out left to 223. Actually, immediately left to 223. And then intercept the uh, VOR outbound over the ocean and then come back. Um, and that's that. I'm also going to set up a plate binder so I have that all done because uh, this is going to go uh, pretty fast. Uh, plate binder. Let's see here. Uh, where to do this? Binders. Add that. Okay, so there was a little bit confusing here. Uh, so that's that. Okay, so. 
I have the uh, taxi diagram ready. And three finger swipe. That's going to take me uh, the departure. And it's what what is cool about this is it suggests to have approaches to the runway you're uh, departing from uh, ready to go. So I'm going to put in what I said, the ILS, to come back into runway five if I need it. And at 401, I'm going to take the approach RNAV. And uh, that's that. Uh, and the uh, there's an actually uh, airport diagram here as well. Now, I'm going to create a new plate binder for the other one. Um, actually, I don't need that. I'm just going to need to load up the approach for the next one. So I'm, I'm going to forgo that. So, when I put up, when I get onto this, you probably cannot see that, but uh, I am now the uh, airport diagram ready. So when I get to the air, uh, runway, I can just swipe over to the departure uh, procedure. And uh, once I'm on it or need it, I can swipe next to the, uh, wait, wait, why it is not, why doesn't the, uh, I didn't get the approach that I wanted there. Let's see now. Did it now turn out right? It's good. Could I check this now? Okay, so here's the approach, or the departure. Here's the approach to back to uh, North Bend. And then the RNAV Alpha, which is going to be a failed or uh, misapproach. And then uh, the airport diagram in case I should get there, which I won't. All good. And the route on 4 flight looks exactly like the one I charted for you on uh, the uh, um, sky vector chart. The most interesting here is actually going to be whether or not I'm able to, to fly this uh, without uh, making a fool of myself here, which is not entirely impossible. Uh, IFR is kind of unique, un uniquely uh, stressful when in uh, conditions like this because it's uh, there's so many things you have to focus on and you can start forgetting to do uh, proper scans and uh, forget to change tanks and uh, silly stuff like that. I've probably done mistakes with the plane already here, just sitting here. Um, All right, let's get the GPS into the, uh, if I'm going to hand fly the IFR out, uh, that is my plan actually, yes. Uh, it's very short, uh, so I, I mean, uh, it shouldn't be a problem to, uh, to hand fly it, uh, especially with, with this gear that I have here, it's, uh, it's uh, kind of, if I had, yeah, well, actually, I, I, I probably should. Uh, for uh, for training as well, and also it, it kind of makes the uh, the whole procedure a little bit more interesting because if I put it on GPS, it's gonna be just sitting here like this, waiting. That's not fun. Anyway, babbling away. Uh, add procedure. Select departure. Runway tree one. Ledge. Load. And it sequences me towards the off. Uh, um, runway towards off. Oh, Jesus, how does that make any sense? It's probably some GPS fancy thing. It's going to be interesting to see if it's uh, hard in the sim since you can't feel it moving you. Uh, yes, I know. Uh, that's one of the few things uh, I kind of miss in the sim here. I can feel the controls being moved, but I cannot feel the, uh, yeah, the plane moving around. So uh, at some point, uh, if I have enough money, I might uh, buy a full motion platform to have the sim on. Crazy stuff. Am I seeing an airplane in the distance here? Uh, 
I'm seeing a delta sitting here with uh, lights on. Is there somebody else here? Or it's just a scenery thing. Anyway, uh, that looks like the GPS is on board with uh, my plans here. Ledge mud. Mud. Da -da 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 -da. M U D D D and that's the um, can I add the, the uh, approach as well? Nope, I cannot. I have to wait to put that until I'm... Oh, I didn't have a, uh, an airport here, so uh, that's probably why. Four. Uh, four, Sierra one. Sierra one, Gold Beach. Now can I probably add a, an approach? From mud. Fry course reversal at mud. Uh, is there a course reversal at mud? What the hell is this? Oh yeah, yeah, that, that's, the, that's the first one I was thinking about, the second airport. Uh, no, I don't think so. Uh, well, maybe I should. Maybe I'm, I should expect that. Uh, 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 well, hmm, that's a conundrum. Maybe I'll have them... Uh, I'll actually uh, wait with uh, loading the uh, uh, approach until I get whatever they plan to do with me, whether they want me to go straight in or not. I'm assuming that I'm just uh, 10, 15, maybe 20 degrees off from uh, from going straight in, so I don't think that's going to be a problem. But uh, I'm going to wait until I know what they are, what they are saying. Uh, but every everything else until the initial approach fix is now in the route. Let's just... I know you can't see this. I uh, You see just a little screen here is uh, the uh, GNS530, which I'm loading this into. And uh, that route looks sound. So to put power back to the iPad. Okay, uh, I can put the com back on. Okay. Tower Hawker, five two zero Juliet Fox is on the visual for uh, one five. Your five two zero Juliet Fox shot at the tower. We will move back quite a land. One five for land zero Juliet Fox. Okay, you folks are. Uh, passengers in this plane so if you feel that I'm about to kill you speak up if not forever hold your peace because I'm gonna crash uh, if I do a mistake or at least might very well do that so now's your time before we depart okay I'm at Cusa Vision Bravo to 3-1 that's gonna what I'm gonna get for taxi I have a strange feeling that I've forgot something. Good evening, Cascade Approach. Go ahead. Evening, Cascade Approach. Where's your peanuts and whiskey? Six whiskey. Uh, Charlie is far flight 10 to the north of 3 Sierra 8. Would like to pick up via far flight following up to Kilo Echo Uniform Golf. Kilo Echo Uniform Golf. Eugene. Oregon. Six whiskey, Charlie. Golf 6545 right out. Five zero for seven seven six whiskey truck. Your six whiskey Charlie squawk six five four five Igan. Six five four five and the flash is coming seven seven six Oof. whiskey truck. There's the flash coming. Your 
Ranger 776 Lake Charlie Radar contact 36 miles northwest of Medford Airport, Medford Altimeter. Two niner, 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 contact the Center, uh, 121.4. Yale Center, 121.4, seven seven six Wave Key Truck. North Bend Ground, Weber 524 Echo Alpha at Coos Aviation Taxi IFR. Zero 08 Alpha, Zero 524 Echo Alpha, runway 31, Taxi Weber Bravo. 31, Weber Bravo, Weber 524 Echo Alpha. Right, that's expected. Okay, your peanuts and your whiskey is. Uh, Behind the back bench here, behind there, that's where it is. Uh, that's also where that fat dog that I stole from uh, uh, an airport in NorCal is sitting. The dog might have eaten the peanuts. He doesn't drink whiskey though. That's around Hawker uh, 520 to the Fox left on Alpha. Zero 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 Foxtrot, taxi the back in the uh, Alpha. Have a good day. Alpha, you as well. Zero zero Fox. Oh, I don't like this. There's uh, hard work upcoming. Yeah, the weather hasn't changed. I have a crosswind from the right. Be ground Cessna 16789 or is that Glacier Aviation? We'd like to taxi out to remain the pattern with whiskey. At eight knots. 3011. Probably going to be built with this uh, cloud layer though, very quickly. So, uh, so there is at least some respite when I get above it. I hate to fly in. Uh, complete IMC the whole way. That would be uh, very stressful. That would be a good time. No, actually, now would be a bad time to do it, but uh, I'm going to remind myself to put the... Frequency for the VOR into the uh, secondary radio. Wouldn't that be clever? Should have done that at the uh, ramp. Runway three five, taxi via Echo Foxtrot. Cross runway two six at Foxtrot. Taxi's runway three five via Echo Foxtrot and cross two six at Foxtrot. Skyhawk seven eight nine er. How was the uh, audio levels, by the way? Is uh, ATC really overpowering, or, or does it sound reasonable? Okay. At the end here, and holding short. Uh, yeah, we're going break. to the same old uh, Kilo Sierra Papa Bravo. It's good, fantastic. All right, the VOR. Bravo Papa, excuse me. One one two point one. One one two. Point one. Is that? Yeah, I can see. It wake up, woke up. Fantastic. Um. That would be also a good time, since I'm doing this preparatory work here, to put in the ILS frequency, 108.5. Get that all ready, so I can just select, um, yeah, whatever yeah, it's called. Hour, uh, November 9078 Alpha Papa holding short runway 08 at Alpha 1. Okay, a quick takeoff briefing, and we're going to squelch the radio here. And also set 
departure frequency, 1 to 1 point 1.4. Okay, uh, squawk is set, departure is set, runway 3 1, 6000 is set, uh, auth 7 dot ledge as filed. All right. Um, departure. Departing 3 1 and immediate left turn to run uh, heading 223, which is set. Then I'm going to intercept the VOR, which I've set there. The GPS will sequence me, uh, but in case it doesn't, uh, that's what it does. It's not going to be very long. I'm probably not almost going to reach that. Uh, uh, yes, it, uh, the VOR is just outside here. Um, but I'm going to intercept that very quickly. And uh, at 1300, right turn back direct the VOR. Once I reach the VR, I'm going to just be turning southbound towards ledge. It's very simple. It's basically a loop the loop uh, to yeah gain some altitude before going inland. Uh, climb gradient is no factor. Let's see the text description here. Climbing right turn. No, oh, wait a minute. Here, uh, climbing left turn, heading two to three, and auth radial two five three. Then from over. Uh, no, continue to climb on off to five three radial right to one thousand three hundred right turn direct off VOR, then aside transition over the VOR on the radial one six seven two ledge. Okay, should be fine. And uh, all right. Run up. Trim is set. Auto rich, propeller full rich. Okay, engine is just about to be in the yellow temperature, uh, so it's warming up. Bags are good. Tip's good. Let's check for ice. I, IFR, Beaver, yes. Not only am I IFR, I'm actually uh, L IFR. Flappage, I'm gonna go all the way up to 6,000. The only thing I need to do now is uh, strobes. Oh, I'm nervous. North Bent Tower, Beaver 524, Echo, runway 31, ready for IFR departure. Beaver 524, Echo, North Bent Tower, runway 31, perfect, Echo. Left for takeoff, runway 3 1, Beaver 5 to 4 Gotha. And Albuquerque departure, November 9078 Alpha Papa with you, 8200 climbing 9000. True, 978 Alpha Papa, Albuquerque departure, radio contact, call me maintain 1 1000. I maintain 1 1000, November 9087 Alpha Papa. And, uh, well, it's unclear whether it is clear. Actually, it's just unclear. Run a tree one. Oxtail soup. That sounds good. Okay. Well, there it is. Here's my live engine. This is the green. Some sort of center line here. There it is. That's four and three, that will be turning left.
Contact Seattle Center. Contact Center, we have a to work on for them. Seattle Center. Beaver 524 Alpha, 1,100 climbing 6,000. 503 Beaver 5 Alpha. Yeah. Stand by Beaver 5 Alpha. Beaver 5 Alpha. get this uh, turn squared away first here. I'm about to intercept the course back to the EVR 2503. Uh, not what I needed to have to do that while negotiating that uh, departure procedure not that the departure procedure is complex but it's uh, just uh, not exactly what I'd in mind well, there you go first mistake well, two mistakes rather badly flown uh, departure procedure as well as uh, missing this quark. Manual Alpha in the Super Stabane of Wildlife. Well, uh, it is, uh, it's difficult, uh, but it's kind of, uh, kind of rewarding, I find. Uh, steep turn ahead, my GPS says. I can live with that. Right rudder, I can feel it. The uh, the rudder pedals are fighting me here. I have uh, some uh, wind that is pushing me around here. So, but it's it's correct. I can feel it. Come on, straighten out. Uh, that's better. Uh, wait a minute. Three thousand climbing, six thousand, and my GPS sets to turn right, heading two five three right now. Isn't that a bit too early? I'm gonna wait a little bit. Still one mile away from uh, off you are. Oh, the wind changed direction. Why did it sequence me to turn so early? That was kind of weird. Now though, one six seven or something like that. That was the uh, uh, course. One six seven. That's correct. Set that. Something like that. And that needle should start creeping in. Come on. GPS hasn't sequenced me yet, so I'm gonna manually do that to watch ledge. Activate 
There it is. Perfect. And a little bit more flaps up. I see I've dropped manifold pressure. I'm gonna assume ice. So full carb. Yeah, you see. Manifold pressure is coming up. So I got carb ice on my way up there. Should probably have uh, set the carb heat somewhat on before I took off. Temperature is uh, 7 degrees, so that's fine. Right, I imagine it's probably easier with your force feedback setup. You can feel the aircraft being stable for the most part when you need to make an aperture. Well, um, as to... Do I not assume any alpha papa? Here's your transponder. is off again. Confirm my 2767. As David said, um, it's, it's probably easier when you could feel the aircraft, and uh, that is also a part of the moving of the aircraft, which I don't feel. I can only feel um, uh, wind and uh, other forces uh, at the Four, speed. Six, seven, eight, nine, Olympia Tower. I, you said you're ready for departure. Yeah, pushing towards the uh, control surfaces. Uh, so I don't feel the plane shift. I just feel the uh, control surfaces. Alpha Papa contact Alpha Cookie Center 124.32. Alright. Seems to be good. GBM 8 Alpha Papa contact Alpha Cookie Center 124.32. Wind uh, calm down a little bit up here. I have two knot tailwind now. Take out the uh, carb heat. Gonna set the weather for the Gold Beach Airport just so I can monitor that. Wind calm, one and one quarter vis visibility, 300 feet. So I'm not getting down there. That's not gonna happen. 3007. Uh, I'm gonna wait for that. What sort of approach will I expect? I'm gonna be on. They use the same center as this one should have been, so 2755, which is what I expected. I might be changed to the other frequency or I might stay on this one. 500 feet ago. Alright Matt, you are, uh, you probably missed my briefing. I'm planning to go to Gold Beach. Uh, 776 West Charlie, Cascade Approach, Eugene, altimeter 3006. My plan is to fly the Arnav Alpha, but the weather is horrific, it's not gonna happen. Uh, so I'm planning to fly it and go missed, just for the exercise, and then I'm gonna uh, go to Crescent City, which is just barely on the edge of what is uh, possible. So if that's not going to pan out, I'm going to try once more at Crescent City for the RNAV 1-2. And then I'm going to go to my actual alternate, which is uh, Medford. Right, 6,000. Zero point three miles to the right, of course. That's one of the things I love about GPS. You can be so precise. 
0.2, 0 0.1, oh, 0 0.01, rather. So, now I'm exactly on. able to follow the desired track and to see my actual track and uh, the cross track error that's absolutely gorgeous as far as precision goes Looks like I'm creeping down a manifold pressure. Let me put in some heat here and see. Oh yeah. So here we go. That means very humid air. Okay, since I have a minute or two, I'm gonna have a quick look through the approach again. In four minutes, I'm going to be turning right towards the final approach fix, which is mud, and that's uh, the angle for that is more than 30 degrees. So I might very well not be cleared straight in. I could be asked to be vectored for a straight in, or directly towards the final approach fix. I can probably ask to be vectored so I can get a straight in, so I can uh, do mud but straight in. Uh, so I don't have to do uh, the hold. Yeah, my altitude holding is bad. Okay, it's cold enough to be uh, good with pedo heat. If I do have to go with hold, it's uh, uh, it's a direct entry if I go there, so it's going to be easy enough. It's an RNAV, so um, so it should be uh, in the uh, GPS anyway. I was thinking about avoiding it because I don't. Then I have to set up the VORs and do all the reversal mess. Uh, but uh, with the GPS, it should be uh, easy enough. And uh, it actually asked me if I did want the course reversal. So uh, I'm going to ask for the vectors for the uh, straight in approach just for the uh, for that training exercise, but if they cannot, or they don't understand, or uh, anything else messes it up, I'll do the uh, hold. Jesus, what is happening now? Why am I climbing? There's one interesting thing there, though. Uh, the holding pattern, it says 8,000 as upper altitude and 4,200 as lower altitude. So I, I can cross... I'm going to uh, cross mud at 4,200, but that, does that mean that I have to descend in the hold? Or can I descend before that? So that's an, uh, that's an interesting... I'm going to write that down and ask about that later as well. 8,000. 
upper limit and 4,200 lower limit. So if anyone else in the plane has seen that before, uh, that uh, there's uh, there are two uh, altitudes listed. Um, 8,000 with a line above it, 4,200 below. Uh, with a line below. Does that mean uh, that, could, that it could be cleared towards mud at 8,000 and then have to descend? Or could I be vectored or uh, let down before that? Are there any uh, airways? Yeah, there are no airways leading, as far as I can see, that are leading to it. Also, have to remember to circle uh, left traffic. Uh, if that turns out to be what I'm going to do. If I get the airport in the site. But the wind is calm now, so that's that's not going to be a factor. Well, now I'm headed towards mud, and that's why I'm out of course here. Uh, Desire track 2196. Uh, Set. I'm fully half mile off course here, I didn't pay attention to that. Alright, uh. MSA in the area 6,500. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, uh, I'm sure what the MVA is. Suspect not much lower. Of the descent in the hole in all situations. Hold. Okay. Rather. Uh, yeah. So, the MVA might actually be a factor, but I'm cleared to f fly this at 6,000. So, um, so that might be there the limit for ATC as well. Uh, so, if I'm... Uh, uh, I might have to cross it at 6,000 and do the hold. So that is true. That might actually be uh, what it is for. I haven't seen that before, actually. But that makes sense. So I could probably also... Uh, Enter it at 8,000, for example, uh, but that would be uh, they didn't they wouldn't want people to uh, uh, come at it at 16,000 feet and then spiral all the way down to 4,200 before uh, uh, flying inbound. Uh, so it would be interesting to know what the 8,000 limit is. Is that just uh, the highest uh, MVA, for example? You can expect uh, the ATC to, uh, if, you know, if you come from the south, maybe the MVA is 8,000 and you have to go uh, an extra spiral around. In any case, I'm uh, the way I can fly this beaver, I can uh, cross it at. Uh, actually, let me just check that. Um, if I cross it at 6,000, I have six miles to get down to 2,000. There's an airway that's close by the MEA of 4,700, which is weird. MEA. Uh, but that's the uh, Victor Airway. Uh, no, that's the that's the uh, T route. Um, yeah, the, the T route is uh, has a has a lower uh, uh, MEA because it's a T route. The other one uh, is also more inland, so that's uh, yeah. I guess probably those two. Uh, points are why it's conspiring to be uh, lower than the other one. <coughs> but I'm thinking that I'm not going to need to do the holding pattern because the holding pattern is there to get down to that altitude, but I can cross mud at whatever altitude I want to as long as I can get down to uh, pit me at uh, 2700 or at least make the approach. Uh, so um, I'm probably within my rights to uh, cross it at 6,000 where I am now. 
and then just use the next six miles to drop down to 2,700 and then or indeed the next 11 miles to drop down to uh, circling minimums which is 1,740 So if I really slow it down and uh, pull the power the way I can with this plane, uh, I can probably drop that altitude very unproblematic without doing the hold. So I'm, I'm actually going to do that, unless I find out otherwise. Unless people in the plane, of course, argue that that's procedurally wrong, and that I really have to do the uh, uh, turn. I'm kind of liking this. I'm learning new things here. Okay, so here, uh, 8,000 is just the max holding level, so if there is any aircraft, got 10,000, every 1,000 feet, yeah. Uh, yeah, so, so they, if there's uh, an arrival much higher up, they would be held elsewhere if, uh, while someone else is dropping in at 8,000, for example, and then spiraling down, going in, landing, and then they will let the other person in. I wonder how often that happens at this plane airport. Probably not. Maybe it's never happened. Yeah. Listening to the opposing bases podcast with those two ATC controllers, they are talking about some uh, departure procedures, uh, or rather missed approaches, that at their uh, triad airport they never use them. Uh, Alpha Romeo, once you pull off the runway, you want to stop past the hold short and wait for ATC to give you a taxi. This is a controlled airport. Uh, have a good night. Wrist slap. You can let ATC, sorry, you can let power know that you're clear of the runway. Usually we try to get back to you prior to that, but um, yeah, you'll, you'll want to wait for ATC to give you taxi to the, to the ramp. Three, five, clear for the option. Three, Alpha Papa, do you have a clear to pass in the towel? And Albert Center, November 8, Alpha Papa, requesting RNAV for runway 4 from Dixon. Nine or seven eight Alpha Papa Dixon cleared RNAV runway four approach and report established uh short approach court. Alright, uh weather updated. And, uh, cleared RNAV four from Dixon, uh report established uh, nine minutes ago. Papa. Wind three one zero three knots, no factor. One quarter mile visibility. Yeah. Uh overcast three hundred. So I'm absolutely, positively not going to land there. The uh, there's nothing uh, at all that's gonna allow me to land with this uh, with that sort of uh, weather. Let me just check. Did also Crescent City get worse then? Yes, it did. Thirty minutes ago, it updated, and it's now one quarter mile visibility and vertical visibility 200 uh, feet. Vertical visibility. All right. Is that what they... Uh... Okay, vertical visibility, basically clouds or uh, fog. Anyway, so it looks like uh, my excellent approach to uh, McNamara will end up in a missed approach as well. So that's, uh, so that's good. 
I had hoped to be able to land there, but uh, if it's going to stay that way, I uh, uh, will uh, I will try the approach. By all means, I have a plan. But if it doesn't pan out, I will. Uh, if it stays that bad, I will go directly to uh, Medford Thank after. So it's getting worse. So soon they will start uh, uh, reporting uh, RVR or something like that, which is a bad sign. Okay, so I've, I've decided to uh, do not do the hold. I'm just going to dive straight down towards the final approach fix at 2,700 feet. Should be no problem at all. And uh, at the final approach fix, there's a change in course. Just to uh, remind myself, there's a slight shift to the left. Uh, 13 or 14 degrees. Let's see here. Can't find any information about the MVAs nearby, but the MIA uh, is 5,800, which makes nil that. What's the MIA again? Minimum. Uh, I, I don't remember what that is, but you can probably tell me. MIA. Missed in action. Minimum I faulted. Okay. Seriously? So you're patterning around at uh, Gold Beach, uh, David. Okay, well, interesting. Uh, oh yeah, you're scud running. All right, I'm. Uh, Ten miles out. So I'm gonna request the approach and advise that I'm probably gonna go missed. Huh. Full pattern. Your Alpha Papa is not cancelled. You will report missed approach or IFR cancellation. This frequency or on the ground on 122.2. Two. And Alpha Papa understands report missed approach or IFR cancellation once on the ground. Alpha Papa. So once here, Charlie, come back to departure. Seven eight nine or runway three five clear for the action. Paper five to four alpha has the minute weather at Gold Beach and request RNAV Alpha. Um, Step on someone here. Uh, from mud. From mud. Be prepared for golf. At or above 5,000, and uh, I'm uh, not gonna be needing the procedure turn. Do I have to fly that? Uh, you can fly to work off. Um, for Echo Alpha, um, unless you're clear straight in, um, if you start the approach from NIAF uh, procedure turn, whether the procedure turn depicted it is required, but uh, you're clear straight in RNAV Alpha approach. Excellent. Cleared straight in RNAV Alpha approach from mud at or about 5,000. And then, by advice, I'm very likely going to go missed. We're about to forget. Alpha, 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 Alpha
Okay, 5,000. Straight in. Procedure. Select approach. Mood. No. Of course, I'm sorry. Acti bite. Right. So, 122.8 in case I get there. I want to set up another flight so you can get some riding done. Oh! How about uh, firing up the Beaver and fly it over to uh, Finland or something? Uh, the, the weather reports missed. So it might be that the uh, explain 12 modeling is not uh, doing it as expect. I can hear the Discord beeping. We'll go before Alpha. Engine is coughing a little bit here, assuming that is carb ice. Phenom or, or some shit. Alright. Or how about the Challenger or some shit like that? So pit me stray and back to mud. That's our right turn. Climbing 2,100 first and then 4,200 foot mud and then hold. Okay. So I'm uh, basically ready for this. Put that into the overlay map here. Approach. Arnav. Mood. And route. Excellent. Three zero zero eight. Set. And I'm at eight thousand, or rather five thousand. And I'm going to stay here for 30 seconds. To which point I will turn left, heading 0... No, uh, 146. Four, three, two, one, and here we go. Now we can get down to 4,200. Set. No, actually I can get to... 2,700, that's what it is. Set. Very good. Alright. Slow it down a little bit here. Geneva hasn't been heard eating once in a half past half hours. It must be right now. Oh, I've never noticed that. Okay, I'll have to report inbound. Beaver 5 to 4 5 is uh, stabilized on the uh, approach. Oh, stabilized. Copy. Beaver 5 to 4 5. See ya. So I'm on 122.8. Two minutes until half. It's hazy here, but able to see the airport. Five, four to five visibility, class G only need to move on, studied mild visibility and clear of clouds. Indeed. I, however, I'm flying IFR and I have a uh, other requirements. Uh, 
uh, and I have different weather. Gold Beach traffic, Bieber 524 Kafa is 10 miles uh, north uh, northwest, descending through 4000. Inbound to land, most likely not. But if I am going to land, runway 16 straight in. Gold Beach. Okay, I need to keep my scan going here because now I'm losing control here. That's not a good thing. HUD system. Cat 3 Beaver. That would be a Beaver 3. Okay, pit me coming up very fast now, actually. I can be there at 2700, so I'm still way above the approach here, so I need to uh, get my s altitudes squared away. And now is also the left turn to 1 tree 3. Set. Seven seconds still to uh, the turn. And here's turning. Now I can descend to 1,700. I'm going to say 1,800. That's going to be my minimums. Stray is four and a half miles away. Take a little bit of laps. Beach traffic, Beaver 524 Akava is 3 miles northwest, descending through 2700 inbound straight in runway 16 Gold Beach 2600 for 1800, and I am 3 miles out. Jesus, I look away for one second, and I'm uh, off the course here. Come on, get back in line here. The wind is picking up here as well, so I got a tailwind. Lovely. 300 to go. I can't see nothing. But I'm going to stay at 1,800 until the faff. At which point I will be straight ahead, what is it, 2100, and then right turn back to mud at 4200. Okay, 1800. Sight. 45 seconds until 5. Take the uh, RPM down a little bit. Jesus, what is going on now? seconds until five. Can't even see the ground here. All right. Let's approach. Ah, oh, jeez, I can see the coastline now. Yeah, but anyway. Go on. Let me 
ist. Cold Beach traffic, be verified for a car climbing through 2000 and gonna be turning uh, north westbound. Final call. Cold Beach. 2100, right turn back to. Mud. I'm suspend and back to mud I go. 3 2 5 is the desired course according to the GPS. 3 2 5 is set and I'm going up to 4000. That is strange that you have a different METAR than I do. Uh, it might have changed here as well, though. I haven't checked. Updated six minutes ago, according to Flight here. Uh, Windcom, quarter mile visibility, overcast 300, altimeter 3009. So, not all that good. Anyway, saw so you in the right turn. Yep, perfect. So you got a got a flash of beaver. I'm, uh, I'm happy for you. Uh... Okay, we're going back to center. Which center? Oakland? Seattle. Seattle Center, Beaver 524 Echo Alpha, 3600 climbing, 4200 on the missed approach. 524 Echo Alpha, Seattle Center, I don't. I don't. Beaver 524 Echo Alpha. Beaver 524 Echo Alpha, radar contact, 411 miles north of Crescent City DOR. Beach altimeter 3008. Zero 08, zero beer park out to Fat for Gava is going to want to divert to uh, Crescent City. That's Kilo Charlie Echo Charlie for the RNAV 1 2 from Simel. I maintain 6,000 and um, uh, advise what uh, be a part of our government. You said you want to take the R now for only a one to approach for Simo, Charlie, and they have my Gecko Lima. Uh, affirmative, RNAV 1-2 from uh, Simul at uh, Crescent City. Roger, you are clear to Crescent City Airport via direct Simul. Uh, direct, maintain 6000, expect RNAV from 1-2 approach. 
Clear to Crescent City via uh, direct symbol, direct, maintain 6000, then can I get a heading uh, for that uh, symbol so I can program it? For Glossop Macon, left turn heading 150. Left turn heading 150, you're fine to work off of. Calling Firefighter request, thank you for the call sign. Albuquerque Center is on the runway 978 off of Paso. Uh, just request your VFR at the top at uh, Taos, terminating at Taos VOR. And I'm direct for the initial approach fix. Oh, so now. Uh, that was stressful. And now I can do four flight as well. So that is on board with my plans here. Two. Procedure. Approach. And coming up on 6,000. Seattle Center, and you're on the ground. On a 1-2. Simul. Add. Perfect. Six four four five. You're clear to Payne Airport. Kino six departure. Uh, to Pen Cove. Uh, direct. Ewok. Direct. Maintain four thousand. Excellent. Frequency one two six point six. Oh, B A World Tour. What is that? B A. Oh, uh. Concord? British Airways, British Airways virtual. Oh, okay, so what kind of plane are you flying then? About to work off, we'll report Simul. Which will happen in uh, 13 minutes and 50 seconds. Okay, weather is 310 at 3, so that's on factor. One quarter mile visibility, that's shite. Uh, I need three quarters, so uh, looks like I'm headed to Medford today. I had really not hoped for that. Might have to just find my way down after I uh, get into VFR conditions uh, more inland. However, though, it's uh, the sun is setting, so a 
might be problematic. This turned out to be a much longer flight than I had planned. Uh, however, as opposed to the flight I did yesterday, for those of you who watched that or did uh, look up the VOD, um, this plane has lights. Uh, you can call number one for departure. And um, uh, this uh, yeah has light and GPS and uh, all kinds of things. Radio even. Uh, yesterday I flew a plane without nothing. Uh, negative. The, uh, the airport is considered uncontrolled. Just call number one for departure. Doing it in G medu. Um, Airbus 321 are currently in storage. Tour comp comprising 81 legs. Commemorate Queen's 17th Jubilee. Little <laughs> We're done it well. We only control 40 different or select airports within our coverage area. Um, and Belling, um, Bellingham is not on that list. So we consider it an uncontrolled airport. It is controlled in the, air, the real world, that is correct. But we treat it as an uncontrolled airport. Didn't she uh, have her 17th Jubilee, though? So the uh, celebration is. Oh, commemoration is uh, valid. If you did like it on a controlled airport, do the normal announcement you would and contact me um, prior to departure and, and number one for, for departure. She, she got there, yes. But always a good thing to have some reason to, uh, to go around the world, regardless of uh, the reason. You can just contact me on this on this frequency. As long as you're on the ground, this frequency will work. So one, two, three, Alpha Bravo, Yakov and Tower, make sure they're on my two seven zero point three mile final. I see you, David. You are following me. Scud running below the deck here. Before I go off your clear direct. Uh, correction, cross side mile at 6,000, cleared on a runway once to approach and report inbound at Fern. Uh, direct side mile uh, at or above 6,000, cleared on a one to approach and all report inbounds from, inbound from Ferns. We were fat for a Yeah, I was seeing, uh, you showed up on the, the, uh, uh GNS uh, traffic uh, thing here. I love that uh, Keith finally got that to work. Um, and our oh, four yes, flight. Tell your transmission is cutting up, cutting out uh, in multiple. On four flight, areas. I can see you on the map um, with your uh, two five Bravo, de uh, two five Delta Echo. Your transmission is, is very very um, blotchy. Bravo Yakima Tower, you said you're flying eastbound. Okay, so the cloud tops here around uh, 4,000 or something, so uh, I can just Roger. get clearance up so I can uh, get that and uh, then I can cancel uh, IFR because it's going to be clear. Someone was calling in, you were very, very faint. They give a call, please. Okay. About time to uh, get some. Uh, Fuel transfer going. That is correct. Copy. Do you have a uh, approximate release time? Utter eight off of Papa. Hold for release means you, the pilot, cannot depart until receiving an IFR uh, uh, release. But that is obtained by the pilot. So whenever you're ready for departure, that's when you call to obtain it. I'm still nine minutes from uh, yeah, Alpha Papa is, uh, ready for departure. You're not okay. ready for Papa. Release your departure, clear the void if not off in three minutes. If not off in three minutes, survive Albuquerque Center of Intentions within one zero minute. Change of other frequency occurred. Ooh, that uh, wind is changing here. Come on. Okay, TBM 8 Alpha Papa is released if not off in three minutes, well advised 8 Alpha Papa.
Okay, so I need I need my carb heat on. It seems like uh, it is really uh, humid. So now I have a crosswind from the ocean here that is pushing me off course. I set this chorus thing here wrong. Yeah, it's pointing the wrong way, that's why. Jesus. Let's uh, just go ahead and pretend that didn't happen. Um, so, not only is the wind actually pushing me the other way, I was compensating the wrong direction. 0 0.7 miles, so not completely uh, out into the weeds or uh, the uh, yeah, seaweeds rather uh, but uh, that was a very stupid mistake okay, transferring fuel here I have, have about 40 some. Yeah, I need to stop the transfer before it's uh, complete because uh, otherwise I will dump the fuel overboard. Are you still able to see anything uh, below there, David? It should be horrific, shitey uh, weather. That is interesting. Yeah, so uh, perfectly good uh, VFR conditions then. What's the uh, uh, ceiling? Alpha Papa, your radar contact one two miles southeast of house VOR. Hey, Alpha Papa. Okay, you could see that it uh, that the weather is uh, uh, worse uh, inland there. I see some traffic around there. Uh, I see one that is a couple of thousand feet above you, behind you. See if I can get a speed reading on it here on four flights. 250 knots. Uh, so it might be a military thing going on on a on a one of those uh, IR routes or BR routes. There's also some traffic at K Buck or in the pattern. Okay, so let's just have a look here. If I uh, I'm actually going to fly the v, uh, the the part uh, uh, the missed approach uh, all the way back towards Ferns. Uh, but I'm going to request uh, 
6,000. Because that will take me above the layer, uh, in any case. So that I can go, go VFR over the rest. So I'm gonna I'm gonna use the uh, departure procedure, uh, the missed approach procedure, uh, as my uh, first clearance limit. The uh, the hold at uh, the intermediate fix there, uh, so that I don't need to be copying a new clearance uh, while uh, flying. That's too stressful now, I think. Two and a half minutes to go to the uh, initial approach fix. Okay, I can see that you are 1,000 feet above the bay there. What do you do if the engine goes out? Oh yeah, of course. So he can come in with his C-130 and pick you up. Okay, I can see that I can actually stop the uh, fuel transfer now, so that I don't uh, forget later. Uh, I can't see it. Flashlight for the win. Off you go. I could even use night vision. How about that? How's that for cheating? And center November nine or eight seven or nine or seven eight off of Papa with you at twelve thousand. I'm gonna set that heading. Our clearance. From, uh, Next Barazzo is a one niner niner. All right, coming up on Simul. Initial approach fix. At which point I could descend to 2,600, so that's good. 2,600 okay, is Roger, set. Let me know when you're ready for it, and we are ready. Not gonna be in a hurry. Another seven eight off of Papa. Maintain VFR conditions. Abrazo. Abrazo cleared. Right to turn in for right now, actually. No procedure turn, so I can just turn left on course. This is actually quite bad to be uh, over the ocean like I am now, and then turning east. Oh, south, south, uh, south, southeast. For six miles off so the coast. Three, Alpha, Bravo, Yaka, Mitchell, report, Mitchell, left, Dallin, so I might need to call Thomas as well to have him pick me up. Number eight, Alpha, Papa, to report over Bravo. Report Bravo, eight, Alpha, Papa. Okay, where do I want to go if I don't get down? I'm not going to fly all the way to uh, Medford, I think. Uh, let me see, what's Illinois Valley reporting? It's reporting nothing. That's that's beautiful. I'm just going to fly eastbound and uh, take whatever I can get. And if I have to go to Medford, then I will. So see you... Uh, are getting into the pattern. And weather updated just nine minutes ago. Wind calm, one half mile visibility, so it's improving. Uh, not rapidly, but it is improving. 
it was one quarter earlier, so it has increased immensely. Vertical visibility 200, so that's that's bad. 2.12 altimeter, uh, 2.0 temperature 2.12 altimeter 3010 set. Might just barely be able to squeak in uh, if I. Uh, Just pretend that my alt altimeter is a little bit off. Vertical visibility 200. My mi minimum is 250. So I have a 50 feet spot. I was distracted by a bird. So I had to dive below it. And then I saw the uh, runway. That sounds good. Okay, 50 seconds until ferns. I have 7.3 miles after that. Uh, for the inbound leg, so that should be uh, should be fine to start descending there. Course two two no one two one one nine is it set. So once I get established, I will call. We have a fight for a coffee inbound at Ferns. Thank you. Our job is over to you. Crescent City. Before off cancellation, this project on the frequency on ground 122.2 changed by the frequency curve. Copy. We'll be right back for a copy. And it is 122.8 here as well. Alright. Slam. That's where I'm headed now. Looks like I'm 10 miles out. That'd be correct. Yeah. Crescent City traffic, Beaver 5, 2 Fork Alpha is 10 miles northwest, descending through 5,000 inbound. Straight in, runway 1, 2, Crescent City. More soup than gold place. Nice. So that's, uh, that means that I'm not going to get in here as well. Well, I'll give it a go. This, uh, this this approach takes me much lower, so uh, the variance in the clouds may might very well uh, let me uh, get in. Now I can descend to one thousand six hundred. Set. Uh, Mr. Approach, climb straight ahead. Uh, Actually, at SLAM, I, I need to also verify because this is an LPV approach and I see that it's already uh, uh, set that. So I just have to check that I get the glide slope indication. Uh, which means that I need to be at SLAM at 1600. So I need to SLAM down. So I have 1 minute and 30 seconds to get down the next 2500 feet. So uh, get ready to pop your ears. Technical Airport is showing 0.5 visibility. That's excellent. So I need to really slow down here now. So the descent rate couldn't probably stay around 1,000, but I need to slow way the heck down so that I can uh, get a uh, proper descent gradient. This doesn't look really good. It 
looks like the clouds are mountains here. That is really nasty. Anyway, climb direct to 600 feet, uh, straight out. And right turn 3000 towards Chide, which is uh, the place that is... Uh, miles or so to the south. I see something through here, but there are different layers in the clouds, so I'm not going to trust uh, this to be uh, uh, the ground yet. I have to assume that I cannot see uh, anything uh, before I get really close. I might be able to see some lights. Paper 5 to for, uh, correction. Uh, Crescent City traffic, Paper 5 to Frack Alpha, 5 miles north West, descending through 2800, inbound straight in runway 2, well, 1 2, Crescent City. Yeah, this is bad. I'm not catching the uh, correct altitude at SLAM. So uh, I'm not able to verify that I'm at the uh, correct place. So that's uh, not very good. That's really bad. But I'm gonna try it anyway. I'm now headed for the runway. And still four miles out, so I have time to uh, get settled onto the uh, glide slope. Uh, anyway, the uh, minimum altitude is the minimum altitude. This is really confusing. Really, really dark. And I can for a fact say that my instrument scan is not very good. It's uh, very uh, untrained. Crescent City traffic, Beaver Fat, Furk Alpha, 2 mile, final runway 1, 2, full stop. Crescent City. As if. Okay, 1000 feet to go to minimums. And uh, I actually have. Uh, Two miles, and I'm flying at two miles a minute, so that's two minutes. So I'm actually, uh, I need to slow down my uh, descent. For so probably should be uh, seeing the glide slope very soon here. I see something. Am I seeing approach lights? Is that what I'm seeing? I think that's what I'm seeing. I have lights. Good grief. Crescent City traffic, people fight for a car for short final one two full stop. Crescent City. Jesus Christ, who would have thought? Now that is beautiful. 
Now, about time to get that ground loop that I've been advertising for a while. Oh, okay, let's try to land it at least. And if not, well, just climb like heck. Yes, night time indeed helped. Uh, would I hope to get pilot controlled lighting in here, anyways? Um, but that's how fog goes. You get uh, the the lights coming through the fog. Oh, this is gorgeous. I love flight simulator. This is what it's about. Even if I ground loop. Come on, settle down, settle down, settle down, settle down. Oh, good grief. Don't go anywhere, don't go anywhere. Don't go anywhere. Ugh, I just missed my turn off. Uh, I'm gonna turn back. Crescent City traffic, Beaver Fight, Frack Alpha is back taxing uh, runway 1 2 for a couple hundred feet. Crescent City. Uh, is that that it? Yeah, there it is. Oof, this is gorgeous. X-Plane is such a fantastic simulator and stable and fluent all the way through. Uh, no artifacts and no bugs. Oh, I love it. Crescent City traffic, Beaver 5 to Frog Half is clear of runway 1 2 to the right. Crescent City. 1 2 2.2 for cancelling I fire. Beaver 5 to Frog Half, cancel I fire. Beaver 5 to Frog Half, I fire cancellation. See ya, Beaver 5 to Frog And then I can do... I'm now BFR. Am I not? Hello? Sorry, wrong frequency. Good grief. That's where I might say hello. You're not on frequency. Alright, uh, I can turn off the strobes, that would be uh, a nice thing to do, wouldn't it? Cal or a live flight, that's uh, what I see for FBO here. And I see an airplane, I don't see what it is. Oh yes, I'm uh, guessing you have been flying uh, the um, uh, the mall since I see this. Uh, no, is this a tail dragger or is it, does it just pretend to be a tail dragger? Nope. What are you flying? You're flying beaver. DA-50, okay. Well, so at least you're not a tail dragger uh, with a tail low. However, I need to uh, work on my uh, model matching on uh, a pile, a pile touch, I guess, because I'm seeing uh, uh, recently, the last few months, I have seen uh, not the best uh, yeah, model matching, so. All right, well, uh, let me just get this shut down. Uh, Pito, heat can come off. Uh, I'm gonna keep the landing lights on for a while so I can see the plane. See, uh, run me. If I turn it off, I can see nothing, I guess. Yep. Uh, I 
can safely turn off radio. And I'm gonna listen to... wait a minute. Yeah. As I'm shutting down. Flaps are already up. Fuel off. And uh, magnetos are off. Alternator off. Cabin light is going to remain on. Nav light can remain on for a while. Uh, all right. That was uh, an interesting flight. Um, wasn't it? A uh, couple of uh, stupid and one slightly severe mistake. Um, so that on the departure, I wasn't really uh, able to, uh, uh, to make the GPS uh, follow the um, departure procedure. So I was kind of uh, doing it more halfway. Uh, um, partially using the um, uh, VOR uh, and just basically getting to 1300 feet as quickly as possible so I could loop back uh, so the track wasn't as perfect as it should be uh, but it did the trick though um, then I got flustered because uh, I had apparently I uh, put in uh, 2501 for a squawk instead of 2503 which I checked I looked at my uh, scratch pad which says 2503 so I'd written down the correct one and I looked at the uh, uh, transponder to verify and I verified even when it was cor uh, incorrect so that was a uh, uh, confirmation bias or I expected to see th something and I I just saw what I wanted to. Uh, that turned out okay, though. Um, and then, at some point, uh, I was... I think it was on the this last leg after the first uh, uh, approach, which turned out just as I had expected. Um, I had reversed the uh, uh, HSI needle so that I was looking at the wrong def deflection of the needle so i was when i was correcting i was correcting the wrong way making the uh, cross track error worse didn't amount to much but it was kind of disorienting and i i was looking at the wind uh reading on the gps uh which told me uh, again it's kind of like a confirmation bias i was seeing a lot of crosswind and i was expecting that was the reason why i was out because i'd been tracking relatively okay before that um, so that was, uh, uh, yeah, a uh, mistake, a pretty, uh, dumb one. And then I deliberately stayed high on the approach, on the last approach, uh, so that I could, um, uh, remain, you know, to have some buffer, uh, since I was over the ocean. Uh, but then on the approach, I didn't descend fast enough, so I didn't catch up with the, um, uh, the LPB, the glide slope. So I I never got to see that, basically. I was uh, basically flying uh, flying the altitude as like a uh, non-LPB approach. And I did get to see the um, uh, the runway lights at around 600, 550 feet or something like that. Which uh, I'm just going to check here. Yeah, so that, that was uh, well within uh, the LNAV um, minimums. That was actually good enough. Uh, I had good enough visibility, at least in terms of uh, uh, cloud deck, to, according to this, do a circling approach, because the minimums there is 540 um, above sea level, which is uh, 479 feet above the ground. 
I would not have uh, circled with the visibility I had. That would have been completely crazy. It probably would have been technically possible, but it's completely... Ugh. Um, I was glad that I got the, the runways early as I did, because if I had gotten it later, I would have been legal to land, but it would have been a much more scary prospect. Um, but so yeah, you are correct. Uh, the nighttime helped because the fog was kind of blooming uh, with the light, so it kind of... Uh, if it was daytime, I would probably have seen. Uh, it would would have taken a couple of hundred feet more to uh, to be able to see it, but I think I might might have been able to get down regardless. And the pilot control lighting in the real world would probably give some light at least, so that it might do the same thing. Uh, so so the uh, the worst error I think uh, uh, was the, uh, the the altitude at the end there. It basically turned me into an LNAV approach, so uh, if I had to go much, much lower, I would have uh, kind of... It would, would have been procedurally and technically, um, in a way, uh, uh, bad, because I wouldn't be able to cross-check that the LPV thing was at the correct place. That's at least how you do it uh, for uh, ILS approaches, you have to be at the correct altitude to check. Um, and I'm assuming that on the GPS it's uh, important to be at the final approach fix uh, at the correct altitude. So uh, I kind of downgraded myself. Uh, uh, and I didn't ground loop. Uh, this is going to be much worse now because uh, the longer I fly on these streams without ground looping, it's going to get worse when I when I eventually do. Uh, because it it's uh, it's uh, inevitable, and um, the longer I can get uh, without doing it. Um, In Durango traffic, TBM nine or seven eight Alpha Papa is on five mile approach localizer DME runway three. Durango traffic. Yeah, we haven't gotten that bug fixed yet. Let's see if that helps. Um, yeah, there's a little. Uh, tiny weird bug in the uh, Paltech radio system. Um, yeah, uh, so uh, I would have actually almost wished to have a ground up earlier so that it's going to get it out of the system. But uh, that's how it is. Anyway, uh, I'm going to proceed to shut down and do my walk around. And uh, uh, I'm going to actually leave those lights on until I finished walk doing the walk around. Uh, cabin light can stay on as well. And uh, the rest here inside is good to go. Walk around. Post flight. Shocks. Okay, so I haven't worn out my uh, wheels even further, so that's that's a good thing. I uh, let's move this over here so you can actually see what I'm doing. I'm going back one more step here so you can see. So that's the uh, toggling of the chocks and my worn tires. Cover. I tend to use that only for winter operations. I don't like to use it uh, unless I really stop in a really horrific weather. More chocks, more worn tire. Tie down is on. Tie down on. Pitot cover. There you go. Tie down on and finished. And then I can uh, shut down in here. Lab light, landing light, beacon, cabin light, instrument lights. I love the lighting system and I uh, explained it's so beautiful. And master.
Uh, where is the door? Hinge. There it is. So not much to look at. It's uh, severely dark here. Can put on the night vision, which doesn't really help much. But I can uh, have my flashlight out so I can have a look at the outline of the plane. And just have a quick look around the airport here. I just zoom up a little bit and it's gone. So it's uh, in the soup. Anyways, thanks for watching and commenting and uh, keeping me company and uh, also giving me um, weather reports. And um, good night and good luck. See ya.